Before his role as Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire never really worked out, but after only six months of following this Spider-Man training plan, he was able to get completely ripped. Now, unlike Peter Parker, Tobey Maguire didn't have the luxury of a radioactive spider bite and a dead uncle to get him ripped. Instead, he had a personal trainer with an incredibly French name and a somewhat strange training methodology, Gregory Jujan Rousseau. But Gregory had a few big challenges when it came to training Tobey. First, like we said before, Tobey was a complete noob to the gym life. His smooth, uncalloused hands had never felt the cold sting of iron. Second, we really should be referring to Toby as Spinach Man instead of Spider-Man because he was on a 100% vegetarian diet during and leading up to his role as Spider-Man. Now, personally, I've never understood vegans or vegetarians. Like, how can you be scared of a chicken? I mean, look at these things. What are they gonna do to you? Oh God, a chicken, we're all gonna die. But I understand not all people are as brave as I am. So let's break down the science of Toby's diet and whether or not you can actually build muscle on a vegan or vegetarian diet plan. There are a couple major things non-meat eating gym goers, especially vegans, need to think about. The first is getting all nine essential amino acids can be very difficult. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein, vital for various bodily functions, including building muscle. Nine out of the full 20 amino acids are essential, meaning our body can't produce them on its own, so we must get them from our diet. Without meat, getting all nine can be tricky. Meat provides all of these nine essential amino acids in one package, while most plant proteins are incomplete. This means a variety of plant-based proteins is necessary to get the full spectrum needed to build muscle optimally. The second big concern is getting enough essential vitamins and minerals, also known as micronutrients. Micronutrient-wise, vital elements such as iron, zinc, and vitamin B12 are abundant in meat, but much less so in plants. Iron and zinc are important for muscle growth and recovery, while B12 supports nerve function and red blood cell production. The bioavailability of these micronutrients from plant sources is also typically lower from those found in animal sources. But you can totally overcome these challenges, but doing so calls for careful diet planning, possibly including fortified foods and supplements into your diet and diversifying your food choices. In Toby's case, he needed to hire a nutritionist who planned out every single one of his five meals that he had each day during his physical prep for Spider-Man. He did this to ensure that he was getting the right combination of proteins each day and to make sure that there weren't any micronutrient holes in his diet. Toby's meals consisted of lots of marinated tofu, smoothies, and protein powder, along with cottage cheese to meet his protein goals. On top of this, he also avoided fried foods and anything with a lot of added sugar, also, he would generally avoid salt, which is a giant L that I'll get into in a future video. Okay, so it's sounding like you can build muscle on a vegan or vegetarian diet just fine. So if that's the case, then why have bodybuilders since the 70s been embarking on the biggest poultry slash bovine genocide in human history? Well, the reason they do is because meat, especially red meat, is straight goaded for building muscle, pun intended. At the end of the day, human muscle is just meat. So if you wanna build meat, the easiest way to do this is by eating meat. Think about it this way. If you want to build a brick wall, what's easier? Going to dig up a bunch of clay, refining that clay, molding that clay into bricks, and then using those bricks to build a brick wall. Or just going to the store and buying some bricks and turning those bricks into a wall. Either way, you're ending up with a brick wall. But the second way is a hell of a lot easier. Meat has everything in it that we need to be eating to build muscle. From essential amino acids to vitamins and minerals. Because for the most part, meat is just muscle. So while you can totally build muscle without eating meat, it's just a much less optimal and convenient way to get yoked. Now I know a few of you are about to comment about a vegan or vegetarian bodybuilder who is much more jacked than I'll ever be. And obviously they don't eat meat, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But any benefit and convenience they're missing out on from not putting meat in their mouths, they're more than making up for, for the copious amounts of trend that's going into their asses. Okay, so Toby ate a meat-free diet, we get it. But now let's talk about how he put all that plant power to work. For the six months leading up to the original Spider-Man, Toby would train six days a week for two to four hours a day. That is an insane amount of training, but you know what would have made it a whole lot easier? The sponsor of today's video, Lifestacks. Lifestacks MCT is a delicious coffee creamer that is packed full of adaptogens and nootropics, such as Rhodiola Rose and Panax Ginseng, that combine to give you a real boost in athletic performance. These ingredients are well studied for their ability to decrease rate of perceived exertion, meaning that you can train harder for a longer period of time more easily, meaning more gains over time. But don't get it wrong, Lifestacks MCT is not a pre-workout, but a whole systems upgrade to your health and performance. It'll raise your performance baseline over time, rather than jolt and crash your system. Lifestacks MCT doesn't just give you a boost in the gym either. Thanks to its blended nootropics, it'll make focusing at work or at school a breeze, and it'll be your new best weapon against procrastination. It's also vegan, keto-friendly, low-calorie, sweetened, sweetened with stevia, and has zero artificial flavors. So get yours today and start living your best, most productive life 
using the link in the description of this video. And now let's get back to Toby. So Toby spent two to four hours a day, six days a week training, but all this time wasn't just spent weightlifting. His training was a mix of bodybuilding work, martial arts training, mobility work, and agility work. For his bodybuilding work, they would focus on one body part each day. And in the words of Toby's coach, we would work on a body part each day until we killed it. Every day, a new body part. We'd move on to a new body part the next day and we'd kill that too. So this is what we in the industry call a bro split, a training plan where each muscle group has its own day of the week. So that means each muscle group is only being trained once per week. Back in the early days of bodybuilding, before heroes like Jeff Nippard raised the average gym goer out of the intellectual bodybuilding dark ages, you could find everyone at your local YMCA or Planet Fitness following a bro split. But nowadays, the average gym goer is much more well-educated when it comes to how to build muscle optimally. So the bro split has mostly become a thing of the past, along with Blockbuster, Neopets, and Lizzie Lohan's career. Now, there's a lot of issues with the bro split, but one of the main ones is that this style of training doesn't properly take into account something called the SRA curve. See, there are three phases to building muscle. The stimulus phase, which is your actual training. The recovery phase, where you rest and feed your body so that you can recover from the stress of your training. And then finally, what we're all here for, the adaptation phase, where your muscles grow bigger and stronger in anticipation for your next training session, where you can then start this cycle over again. This is the SRA or Stimulus Recovery Adaptation Curve. And the key thing to understand here is that to optimize muscle growth, you wanna train your muscles at the top of this curve when you have maximized the amount of adaptation from your previous training session. But the trick here is that each muscle group will take a different amount of time to reach the peak of this curve after being trained. Smaller muscle groups like the delts, biceps, triceps, and calves reach the peak more quickly, meaning that they can be trained more frequently throughout the week, somewhere around two to four times. Whereas muscles like the glutes, hamstrings, and quads take longer to recover, meaning that they should be trained less frequently, somewhere around one to three times a week. But a classic bro split completely ignores these facts, and just has you train all your muscle groups at the same frequency of once a week. So if you hit arms on a Monday, your arms will be fully recovered and ready to go by Wednesday. So if you don't train them again till the following Monday, you'll be leaving a lot of gains on the table. That's why nowadays, most people follow training splits like upper-lower splits or push-pull legs as this spreads out the frequency in a way that's much more in line with the SRA curve of each muscle group. Now, Toby's trainer didn't stop with a bro split. He got even weirder with his training methods. Gregory said that he didn't care about how many reps Toby did during each of his sets. He just cares about reaching what he calls the breakthrough moment. This is how he described that moment. A breakthrough moment is when you teeter on the edge of failure because you're not sure if you can perform one more rep. Your body says you can't, your mind says you can. Who wins? Now, this sounds pretty gimmicky, but he's not completely off the mark. We know that you can build muscle by doing sets anywhere from six reps to 30 reps, as long as you're training close to failure, which Gregory was clearly having Toby do. So you could definitely build muscle following this methodology, but it's far from optimal. And that's because if you don't have a set rep range, it's gonna be hard to track and progressively overload your training. Overall, Toby's bodybuilding training was pretty weird and honestly kind of trash. They definitely went with the work hard, not smart approach. And this really goes to show how important proper dieting is to getting ripped. Because even with a pretty subpar bodybuilding routine, Toby was still able to get into really, really good shape because his diet was so dialed in. But that being said, the whole process really put Toby through the ringer and completely burnt him out. In an interview about it, he said, I couldn't eat much food and I had to work out a lot. Now, he was given one full day a week off to let his body rest and so he could be a little bit more relaxed with his diet, but this was nowhere near enough downtime for Toby. And when the filming for Spider-Man 1 wrapped, Toby completely abandoned all of his training and dieting efforts. He was just too burnt out to try and maintain the gains that he made. This is exactly why crash diets and workout programs never lead to lasting results. You might get ripped by training six days a week for two hours a day while eating nothing but chicken, broccoli, and rice for three to six months, and you might be able to maintain these results for a month or two afterwards, but eventually you're gonna burn yourself out, life is gonna get in the way, and you'll rebound just like Toby did. The secret to losing fat, building muscle, and getting the body of your dreams is finding a sustainable fitness and diet plan that fits well into your life. Something that you can actually see yourself sticking to for the long run. For those of you who want to get into amazing shape, make sure to check out my blog where I have tons of free workout program PDFs based off all your favorite characters and celebrities. Link down below. And now check out this video about the unique training and diet plan that Tom Holland used to get ripped for his turn as Spider-Man.